Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial series. This is David Ward and in this series we're going to be going over uh, some animation techniques that um, I'm going to show you my uh, my techniques of doing these techniques. Um, anyways, um, for this series uh, you might be you might have been perusing the site and seen this little guy a few times. This this is uh, this is BC Baker Blender Cookie Baker and since we're kind of in the theme of baking things we thought we thought well, we'll just we'll name him Baker. So, anyways, this is this is Baker, and he's uh, he's going to be the star of our little animation series that we're going to be working on. So, uh, right now, I'll, I'd just like to go ahead and show you the actual model and kind of show you a little rundown of how to use it, how to how to uh, play with the rig and everything like that. I tried to make it as pretty much self-explanatory as I could, so. You know, whatever the shape looks like, that's probably what it's going to do. Like, for example, the the foot shapes look like footprints, so they control the feet. So, anyways, um, let's just jump in here and start playing with some of the controls. Let me show you a quick thing about a, a little quick bit about how uh, this guy is set up. Uh, first off, um, let's just look at the actual model itself, and that's just on this one layer right here. We have our body model our base mesh and if we tab into edit mode you can see that the topology is pretty clean I had uh, Jonathan Williamson kinda double check my my work here so you know he's the king of good topology and all that so he looked at that we also had uh, Basam Kurdali take a look he's the creative creator of the famous man candy uh, he took a look gave me a few pointers so this very much appreciated. Uh, so anyways, this is the model and you'll notice as we go that I have, let me go ahead and hide the model, you see that the eyelids and the eyeballs are totally separate. Of course the eye, my eyeballs usually are separate. Some people like to combine them all into one mesh, but uh, for me I like to keep them separate. But the, the uh, eyeballs and the eyelids are being deformed by a lattice which is right here on this layer. Actually not that layer. Uh, let's see. Is it over here? Where did I put that lattice? One of these layers. I guess maybe it's in here on the bone layer. And maybe it's hidden. Let me put that into object mode. Alt H. Hmm, where is that lattice? Maybe it is here and it's hidden. Yeah, there we go. Okay. as uh, where I thought it was originally, right there on that layer. There. Let's go ahead and turn the rig back off. You can see that this is a lattice modifier and it's changing the shape of the eyelids and any time that they're animated within these confines if I can grab it eyelid there we go you can see that it still conforms to the shape of the lattice so that's a nice trick to get uh, different shaped eyes that could not really exist in nature in real life so the lattice helps you give get some uh, some nice uh, exaggerated features so um, let's go ahead and turn that layer back off and let's just take a look at some of the material settings maybe for for Baker here it's just a basic orangey colored material and I actually have a few different um, materials added to this model and um, I'll go over those real quick orange is just the basic outline let's go ahead and render it out actually let me escape that because I need to turn on the the lights as well. I have the lights actually on two layers here. There's one main light here along with the camera. So we could render it right now and it would show up fine. But we could also turn on this layer here and have another light kind of filling in the shadows on this side. So let's go ahead and hit render there. And it'll ray trace or build the ray trace engine there. Inclusion pro pre processing. And here we go. It's rendering out the subdivisions or the subsurface scattering. So here in a couple seconds you'll see the rendered version of Baker. I guess you saw him already in the little karate kick that we had at the beginning, but this will be kind of a hands-on type of deal there. And that's his tongue. It also has some subsurface scattering on it. So as soon as this finishes out, I'll kind of go over the rest of the colors. And not a not a huge issue, but just an introduction to the character so you can kind of get to know him, you know, very personally. Tell you what, this is taking a little while. I'll go ahead and pause the recorder until it's completely done, then we'll come right back. Okay, 
here we go and just like I said the orange colored skin and you'll notice here on his eyes he has that little glare there now you could probably get the same effect using a, a tune shader but uh, this particular effect I used and I did a tutorial a while back about how to get a image to kind of follow the light source and then kind of act as a glossy spot on the on the eyes so uh, so that's that's a baker you see the orange colors here and then in, if you zoom in real far here you can see his teeth that's gonna be the white there and barely just barely see some coloration there inside the mouth that's his tongue that's that's gonna be the pink and then also we have the darker orange which actually um, is not applied to this to the model at this point it's the darker orange is for the eyelids as you can see there so um, okay so that's our model let's go ahead and take a peek at the rig now let's jump into that and just looking at the rig here and I'll go ahead and throw that back into pose mode um, like I said I tried to make the the shapes pretty self-explanatory um, kind of the shape here kind of resembles a very very basic skull shape and that's exactly what it's for it's for rotating the head um, this is going to be the shoulder joints let me go ahead and turn the layer on with the model as well uh, the shoulder joints I put arrows on them so that you can kind of recognize which direction that they can rotate don't want to really can't really rotate uh, this direction so um, and the hands kind of just have a basic mitten shape you can just rotate those around um, if you want to explore the rig a little bit you can go in here to the object data and you can see that each one of these squares has a dot on it actually don't worry about these these are basically a duplicate of these you can just lock them if you want to um, each square that has a dot means it has something on that layer so let's just go through here real quick click on that you can see that I have some facial controls set up here on this second layer and if we wanted just to see that we just hold down shift and click that first one and have this layer here be the only one selected and uh, here's your facial controls we'll go over those here in just a second uh, so let's go ahead and go through the rest of this zoom out and this layer here is kind of where all the the deformation bones not all of them but a lot of them are where you don't really need to worry about them because um, you have other controllers that are going to be on this very first layer for example the hand will control the arm bending so you don't really need to worry about the arm itself which is why it's on this layer over here um, this layer right here is pretty much uh, I guess just the one bone there and I guess these feet bones are on both both of these layers that's fine um, the reason this hip bone here is there is because this is the actual original base of the spine if you rotate it, you can see that uh, it controls the whole spine however uh, people don't really bend at the base of their spine they bend more at the waist so that's why I have a waist bone here and let me go ahead and turn off the bone shapes so you can actually see it a little bit better we'll go ahead and turn both of those on now this uh, this original hip bone controls the whole rig but it rotates at the wrong spot so if I clear out that rotation and this is sort of a kind of a placeholder uh, to that's flipped the opposite direction than the original hips so if we turn on the axes you can see that uh, it rotates there about where the navel would be the belly button and the original um, hip bone is parented to this one so it follows along but you can rotate more naturally where it should be so anyways let's turn those axes back off and let's go ahead and turn shapes back on and uh, just another quick rundown uh, the head went over that the hands done that the neck is basically just a circular shape that just controls the the twist and things like if you got the head rotated around here and you want the neck to rotate a little bit too you can go ahead and rotate that around it doesn't really rotate on the z-axis very much at all but you can rotate it sideways and back and forth if you need to um, the shoulders we've already gone over the chest as basically just pretty much all three axes you can rotate it 
Same with the spine area and the secondary hip controller. There we go. And the fingers obviously don't really have any shapes to them at all. It's just the standard B bones. And the way I've set this up is when you rotate the base of each finger, it rotates the, um, the, uh, the I guess, the children bones of that. So you rotate that. You can make a fist really quickly just by rotating those three fingers like so. And then the thumb does the same thing. There we go. Okay. Um, not really many controls on the legs. Uh, pretty much the only one we have there is these arrows here. These control which direction the knee points. So if he was sitting down, let's grab the hips and pull him down there. Say so if you wanted to use this rig on a female model and you want her to sit down and be all ladylike, you can put the knees together and things like that. So, um, okay, let's clear those, clear that one. And you know, let's select everything, just hit A. Alt G will clear, clear all of the location uh, and Alt R will clear rotations. We haven't scaled anything. And this rig doesn't really uh, require any scaling. Well, it has a little bit, but I'll show you that later. Um, all, and like I mentioned uh, way earlier, the footprints control the feet, actually where the whole foot goes. And if you want to sp control special parts of the feet, um, this controls the whole foot. But if you want to say, you know, stand up on the tippy toes or something, you rotate that little guy right there. And then you don't want to rotate that. You want to just tap the toes. You rotate that there. So pretty cake, pr uh, pretty cake, <laughs> pretty easy piece of cake. There we go. Clear all, all of this out. There we go. And that's pretty much it for the body. Uh, I think I hit Alt A by accident. Let's go ahead and stop that. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it for the body. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the facial controls. This is where we're going to get a lot of usage in this first part of this animation series. I'm going to be doing a lot of expressions and things like that. So let's go ahead and get familiar with the uh, the facial rig. Uh, same deal here. For the most part, if it's shaped a certain way, that's, that means it's going to control that thing that looks like that shape. For example, this here kind of looks like it's between the eyes, so that controls in between the eyebrows there. And then each one of these are the eyebrows, and they control the top of the eyebrows. And then these little half circle shapes, not quarter circle, I don't know, with the arrows, that means it's an eyelid, and you drag it down. And you can drag it left and right to kind of give more expression, like drag it towards the center. It almost looks more like he's angry. Drag it out to the sides. He's more sleepy or tired or whatever. And the bottom lids are right there. Same deal. Left and right to get different angles. And then we have our cheekbones, basically. Drag those, and you can kind of squint a little bit. Something like that, maybe. Okay, and that's basically the eye controls. Now, I did mention earlier that there was not any scaling to be done with this rig, but there is one little scaling thing you can do, and that's actually on the body rig. It's going to be on this uh, this mask-looking thing, which also, by the way, controls the direction the eyes are pointing. Uh, this controls both eyes, or if you want to control individuals, you can just grab the little circles inside there and drag those around and those control each pupil individually and also I have it set up to where when you scale these little circles the pupils get smaller and if you scale them up the pupils get larger like so and you can scale the whole thing and it'll do both eyes at the same time so um, okay so that's the only scaling thing you're gonna need to worry about on this rig if you wanna use that you don't need to use it if you don't have to excuse me if you don't want to you don't need to but it's there if you want to. So, um, okay, let's turn that body rig back off and keep going with the facial controls here. Got this little circle with the arrow on it there, controls the chin, like so. You can open his mouth, close it, so on and so forth. Um, these here puff out the cheeks, like so. Um, this guy here is kind of strange looking, but um, it'll make sense once I once I tell you what it does. Um, this controls the shape of the mouth, basically. 
from a basic O shape, an O shape, to the wide mouth, wide open shape. Uh, you just move it along these arrows that I put on there. And it doesn't do anything if you twist it around. But if you move it on the Y axis, actually, yeah, I guess it is. OK, the normal uh, direction of the bones. If you hit y, um, G to move it, and then Y to move it on the Y axis, and you got to hit Y twice to move it on the normal Y axis. You move it back, he widens his mouth, you move it forward, he goes in the O shape or the O shape. So, e -o, e -o, e -o, whatever. OK. So, uh, these little semicircles here control the smile and the frown, kind of the corners of the mouth, like so. And then this, these here control the snarl, the grimace or whatever. And this guy here, it's kind of hard to see, controls the top lip. Okay, and this one obviously controls the bottom lip. You can't really drag it down any further, but you can drag it up. So you can, and it also goes in and out for like an F shape or a uh, pouty lip shape. So that's that. Um, we also have a tongue, tongue controller. Let's open the mouth wide open so we can play with that a little bit. Grab the tip of it and drag it out. And then you can arrange where it bends like that. Like if he's licking an ice cream cone or something like that, you can just go into side view. Now, if they're not lined up properly in this view, then they're going to kind of twist around like you can see there. But uh, that's how you control the tongue. And I think that's pretty well it on the facial controls. Yeah, um, this guy, if you drag it way out, you can make the smile even bigger, which starts becoming unnatural because of the wrinkling there on the on the cheeks there. But he can have a great big smile if you like him to. Big cheesy grin. And he's biting his tongue. So let's grab his tongue and clear out their location. There we go. Okay. And then you can kind of just take a peek what it's going to look like without the rig controls in the way. Just hold down shift and click that there. And that's how you control Monzio Bacchio. So anyways, um, that's that's pretty much it on the controlling aspect of how to, how to manipulate this guy, put him in different poses and animate him and things like that. Uh, so I'm sure we'll reiterate some of this information as we go into the animation series. So um, sit back and uh, grab some popcorn or something and get ready to start animating the BC Baker way.